Hello and welcome, everyone. I have the incredible Danny Williamson on this podcast today. I am so excited to have her as a guest. She recently entered my life, but entered like a whirlwind. And I met her and I was like, oh, just whoa, so much knowledge, so much wisdom, but also so much like truth, so much power. And so I'm excited to have this conversation with you today to highlight what you're doing. I got to read your book, Wild and Well, and I am just in love with it. As I was reading, I was like, yes to everything. I totally agree with all of this. And so I'm excited to have you on the podcast today. Thank you. I appreciate that. Today is the two-year anniversary of the release of the book. So two years, been a wild ride for sure. I'm sure it's such a labor of love to put our knowledge and our wisdom and our love into one medium, into one piece of art and share with the world. I'm embarking on that journey right now. So I appreciate all the guidance you've already given me on it. Um, But can you share with our listeners today who you are, what you are about and this journey that you've been on? Because I read it in the book, but I'd love to hear it from you. Yeah, I'm a family practice nurse practitioner who stepped out of the boat about 13 years ago to practice integrative medicine, right? Blending the two uh, uh, modalities of medicine. But prior to that, I grew up in complete chaos, really just a, just my childhood stunk. And my grandfather had died by suicide. My mom attempted multiple times. I had a stepfather that was a child molester. I had another one that beat me almost unconscious my senior year in high school. So I had, I struggled with chronic irritable bowel syndrome. I didn't know what it was. I chronic I struggled with diarrhea. Had my first colonoscopy at 40, had the four, I mean, I'm sorry, at 20, had the fourth one when I was 40 years old. Endoscopies, every procedure known to man for gut health, for gut. Diagnosed with um, fibromyalgia and lupus when I was 35. I was depressed. I was chronically itching. It was a mess. 24 years of seeing doctors, 10 doctors, I was 44 years old before a doctor ever leaned into me and said, Danny, what are you eating? Don't you know your diet controls your symptoms? Do you know your food sensitivities and do you take probiotics and all of that? It turned the entire trajectory of my life around and my medical practice. It changed the way I practice medicine, because I had spent $200,000 on an education that never once told us, if you were born healthy, you do not have to live sick. There's a root cause for every single chronic lifestyle disease out there, right? Disease is turned on by your lifestyle, turned off by your lifestyle. And the root cause of that is going to be inflammation 100% of the time. Most of the time, it's the food that's creating the inflammatory response, but it also could be stress and not sleeping and not exercising. So 13 years ago, November 2010, this, yeah, this month is when everything changed for me. And I started realizing that food will heal you or kill you. And inflammation is for sure the devil. So it's what I do every day, help women and men reverse decades of chronic lifestyle disease by managing their stress, controlling their diet, finding out their food sensitivities, things like that. And I love it. I love it. I'm living proof. You can turn around anything that you've turned on, maybe turn it off. I mean, for sure, dial it under the radar, right? But I mean, I've had lupus since I was 35. I don't take any lupus med- medication. I still have lupus but it's under the radar because I've squelched the chronic systemic inflammation in my body. Oh, I love that. I I love speaking on inflammation. And so I love when someone else validates it. I'm like, thank you. Yes, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Inflammation is the devil. When you have to illustrate inflammation to people, like what is the analogy that you give that lands it for them? Well, I mean, I talk to them about joint pain or, you know, I don't I don't go into like this festering or deal with them, you know, and quite frankly, my patients just want to know what's going to get me better. But I talk to them about joint pain like they don't think they don't even think about inflammation. So I tell them most of my patients have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, right? That suffix itis means inflammation. And that could be gastritis, colitis, thyroiditis, sinusitis, vasculitis, arthritis, 
And that's what I use, honestly, is I'm like, you know, all of these itises, that is an inflammatory response. Well, Danny, my gut doesn't hurt. I don't have any gut issues, really. Well, do you have migraine headaches or do you have headaches? Do you have anxiety or ADD or ADHD? Do your joints hurt? Yeah, my hands hurt every day. Well, that is inflammation. And when we start backing that up and those, those joints start to feel better, you know, then you're going to see this is an inflammatory response. So I usually, just, I don't use anything specific okay. with them, but I talk to them about what's happening to them because they think that gut health or inflammation, gut issues only involve bloating, gas, gurgling, constipation, diarrhea. Well, that's not true at all. Food affects your gut is right. 80% or so of your immune system, right? And your psych. ADD, ADHD, OCD, bipolar, schizophrenia, you know, depression, anxiety. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yep. yep. It's the gut brain axis. It's that connection. It is. And that's why I love Ayurveda 5,000 years ago said, look, gut is everything. If we can just love the gut, honor the gut and heal the gut, everything else you want in life, you can have. And I love that that wisdom was so smart. Even back then it knew all these things. Common sense, practical medicine, which is the tagline, right, on the book. I mean, this is not rocket science. Ayurvedic medicine knew it 5,000 years ago. Daniel knew it in the Bible 2,000 years ago. I mean, Hippocrates knew it. This is not new news, but we are so determined to, to make everything fast, cheap, easy, you know, and we've set ourselves up for failure with phones and computers and, you know, packaged, processed, bagged, canned, fake, man-made food. And and, and we've gotten away from the basics, from the basics. And inflammation makes everything in your body worse, every, everything worse. It's true. And, you know, I love in the book, you said, you know, we don't have an ibuprofen deficiency. We don't have a Xanax deficiency and thus we must take it. And I just laughed because I was like, of course we don't. Yet we think we do. And I find it so funny. My husband comes home every day with a headache and he reaches for Tylenol or Advil. And I look at him like it has to be like I'm dying before I touch those. I have a whole toolkit. I use essential oils, turmeric. Like I will reach into every toolkit on earth before that's my tool. And you wrote the book on turmeric. I mean, you are the the leader in here. He is saying, isn't that funny? It's like what the cobbler's kids have no shoes or whatever. I was married to an electrician for 11 years. Everybody else's switches worked in their houses except for mine. I mean, so isn't that funny? It is how? Funny. It's funny how it works, but slowly I have this like hope that slowly the evolution is starting to change and I'm, I'm putting turmeric in everything for people. They're yogurt, they're this, they're that. I'm like, I'm opening a turmeric gold, and putting it in your food. You're just going to get the benefits then. Ooh, I never thought of that. Well, we'll, we'll start opening it. Then. Sure. Because okay. so a lot of people sense. won't swallow a pill. And so I'm I like, know they won't. I get you. I, I don't want to swallow 50 supplements a day either, but we can open them up, put them in. I put them in my husband's smoothies. I put them in my kid's yogurt. I'm like, at least we all are getting the right turmeric dosage on board today. So absolutely. And yeah. again, so yeah. So, you know, inflammation is, is I, I do a lot of work in the office, right? Autoimmune gut, all of that thyroid hormones, Yes. But the root of all of that dysfunction is going to be an inflammatory response. And you can take every supplement known to man. You can take all the turmeric you want. I don't care. They are supplements, not substitutes. And Correct. I have patients who come in literally with a list a mile long of supplements. And I'm like, well, you know, what are you eating every day? Well, we're driving through our favorite chicken chicken restaurant every day, which I pick on all the time. It has yeah. 53 ingredients in that chicken sandwich. 53, count it. It's on their website. No one should have 53 ingredients in a chicken sandwich, but there is a reason that it tastes the same in Boca Raton, Florida, as it does in Franklin, Tennessee, as it does in Panama City or New York City. Yeah, it was. It's a chemistry experiment. It's a lab experiment. It's a formula. It has to taste the same every time you get drive through your Chick Fil A, right? Sure, it's It's it's, true. My kids, it's fake food. My kids love Oreos, and I always say those are not food. Look at food on the shelf in the grocery store, and it's actually a lot of the times man-made products with smells and tastes added on to chemicals to make them taste like food and smell like food. Honestly, they should sell at Toys R Us. Like, how is that sold in a grocery store to us? That's not food. 
It didn't come from Franken her. food. No, it did not. It's not one ingredient God made. If it was made in a plant and every single bit of this food was, it's chemically, it's designed for addiction. There is a reason at 848 in the morning, there's a line around every Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King, whatever, a line out the door at Cracker Barrel right now because that food was physically designed intentionally for addiction. No. Yeah. You've never driven up to a Chick-fil-A and just driven right up there and gotten your food and never. You're in line around the building. That is intentional, people. And don't ever forget that. There is a, they want you back five times a week, six times a week, not seven. They're closed on Sundays, but they're paying their shareholders. And I'm not picking on Chick-fil-A, but what I'm telling you is if you think that's healthy, that is no better than McDonald's. True. So you might as well go get a Big Mac at McDonald's. There's nothing better. I mean, in fact, there's probably less ingredients in that. So all that being said, it's creating systemic inflammation, which makes everything worse. And especially women as we're aging, right? Yep. As we're That's going, what I wanted to care. There we go. So the ones who have the hardest time getting through perimenopause and menopause are the ones who are the most inflamed. Simple as that. Right. It's true. And that's the thing. I want to dive into perimenopause and menopause because out of yes. all the claims, all the complaints that I hear and all the issues that women are struggling with, I think, you know, there's there's the youth 20s. We're dealing with fertility, endometriosis, PCOS. We know that's a lot of it's based on inflammation. Then right. next 30s, a lot of women are having their kids in their 30s, early 40s. You've got Hashimoto's, thyroid issues, lots of issues there. But all of a sudden, women are crossing into their 40s, and I'm 42, and everyone's like, what is going on here? My body is not listening to me. Nothing is the same. I can try to diet, and there's no budging. Nothing is listening. And so my message to women is, as you enter each decade of life, you have to have a new plan in place. We cannot assume that any old plan works, and we certainly can't walk in inflamed and expect some beautiful, great response for the body when it's going through these big transitions. So I would love for you to speak about perimenopause menopause, because I love what we were sharing earlier. Well, this is my baby now. And I was just telling my office staff yesterday, I said, holy cow, my patient population is getting older and older like me. The women I started with 13 years ago, because I was old when I got out of school at 44, um, you know, they're all in this generation. They're with me. They're, they've gone through perimenopause. We've gone through perimenopause. Although perimenopause, and many women don't know this, it starts in your 30s, in your mid-30s. So that's when progesterone starts to drop rapidly in our body. Well, when are we having babies now? Very few people are having babies at 21 and 22 anymore. Now, there's a lot, but I mean, not not as many as there used to be. Waiting to have babies in their 30s and their 40s, well, guess what? Their progesterone levels are already tanking. So we're seeing more miscarriages and infertility and things like that. But we don't realize it because youth is a beautiful thing and you just don't realize your hormones. I didn't know when I was 35, my hormones were changing because I was I was pretty stable um, when it would come to periods and things like that. Right. So, you know, the old, the perimenopause starts then. We start to have these, these problems in our forties is when I start to see them really raring up with breast tenderness, more, more irritability, PMS, decreased libido, vaginal dryness, right? Just irritable, irritable, irritable. And women, women are shocked and they're like, well, Danny, I'm no way near menopause. Well, no, you're not. The average age of menopause is 52.5. Now, some women go through menopause in their 40s. Some are older, 55. But 52.5 is the average age of menopause without a period, no bleeding whatsoever for 12 months and one day. Hmm. That is official menopause, postmenopausal then, right? Right. So, Many women, and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's happened, Danny. I can't, I've gained 10 pounds. You know, I've, I've, I haven't changed anything. Well, that's the problem. You haven't changed anything. As you mentioned, as we get older, our metabolism slows down. We may not realize it, but our metabolism slows down. I can't eat nearly as much as I ate portion size wise it, when I was 50. I'll be 58 in two months, right? 
I can't eat nearly as much. Our portion sizes have to change. Mm-hmm. The timing that we eat has to change. And and we have to exercise. We have to move our body. But people don't get it. We're still eating the same big pieces, you know, the same big food, same big plates of food, and, and you can't do it. And and they're they're just hormone or emotionally a train wreck. And I look at them and I say, now, Shivani, menopause, perimenopause is a it's an honor and a privilege to go through menopause. It is a rite of passage denied by many. And they look at me like, I mean, they are furious with me. They don't, and they're like, well, what do you, I say, hey, I've already been through it. So I can say this, right? Yeah. I can say this. We got to work on inflammation. There are many women who never lived this long to get through menopause. Always, always remember that. We all have friends who never lived long enough to experience the hot flashes and the mood swings and, you know, the decreased sex drive and the dry vaginas and all of that. So let's embrace it. Realize it's a rite of passage denied by many and let's get through it head on. There's no way around it. If you're going to live, if you're going to live long enough, you're going to have to go through menopause. Sure. Sure. So so what are your best tips then? Because women, as they enter perimenopause, it's interesting you're saying 35 because yeah, it's around 35 that a lot of women start to feel like something's off, something's different. Am I aging? I don't understand. Where's the brain fog from? Why can't I fire at all the same cylinders? What do I have to do to change? So a lot of times we enter that phase and we're like, okay, well, let's work out harder. We've got to join one of those boot camp gyms. Let's do a hit. And it's interesting because only once your kids, I shouldn't say it that way, but oftentimes when our kids hit certain age points, we're able to work at different paces. So my kids are now hitting middle school and I'm able to like ramp up the speed of my work and life and career again. So I feel like you're given this message of like, great that you want to go 200 miles an hour. Now you're ready to go full throttle and your body's like, "Mm -mm -mm, hold on. So how yeah. how do you guide women through that? Because I was reading your book last night and I was like, I know, Danny, that I'm supposed to stress less, but goodness gracious, I finally get to succeed. What do you mean? <laughs> you just you just read my mind because I made some notes about stress. So you are correct. So we we're starting to raise our kids, they're getting older, they're getting a little bit easier. We're what we're ramping up as our body is 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 saying, whoa, right? Yeah. You have to learn to de-stress well, right? It's the fourth, it's the fifth step in my steps to healing. Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, de-stress well, commune well. We are a nation of empty vessels. We are a nation, for sure women are, right? We are pouring from an empty vessel. And I had to write this down because I always forget it. Eleanor Brown, who's an author, she says, rest and self-care are so important. When you take time to replenish your spirit, it allows you to serve others from the overflow. You cannot serve from an empty vessel. Stress is killing us. 80% of people experience stress on a daily basis, 80%. And they feel like it affects their physical health. 70% of people say that stress impacts their mental health. High school students say that stress is their number one concern. High school students. Isn't that something? 75% of all health care visits are stress related. 75%. That's insane. That's the number. Yeah, it is. It's in the book. Of the top six causes of death in the United States, which cardiovascular disease, and we'll talk about heart disease, lung disease, cancer, accidents, liver cirrhosis, and suicide, they are all linked to stress in some way, in part to the inflammation that is caused by the stress response, right, in our body. So, you know, I tell women, okay, we've got to automate, eliminate, and delegate everything you can in your life. A E D, right? Just like the automatic external defibrillator, right? That brings you back to life when you fall over on the treadmill at the gym because you haven't been exercising. You want to go run a half marathon. A E D your life. It is key. And this is the season fall and winter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, all of that. 
is the time to automate, eliminate, and delegate. Automate everything you can in your life. Yeah. Get rid of it. Get rid of it, right? If you if you if you don't like to go to the grocery, then order it online, right? I mean, all the things, the bills, all of that. Automate, automate, eliminate everything that doesn't serve you well. You don't have to be the room mother. And you don't have to. Your kid is still going to go to fifth grade because you're not the room mother. I mean, it's ridiculous. If you don't want to do it, then damn it, don't do it. Okay? Guilt. Guilt is not your friend. Somebody else will pick it up or guess what? They won't. There'll be no room mother this year. Eliminate the soul suckers out of your life. Your life is going to be better. We all have people in our life, our life who literally suck the air all the oxygen out of the out of the room when they walk in. You don't have to have those family members or those people in your life. You don't. You can set your boundaries. True. Anyone who follows me knows I had a toxic mother and she just died in August. And that's that's sad. It's sad. Your mother died. But I never had a relationship with my mother. She was extremely toxic. And I had set my boundaries a long time ago. But guess what? When she got sick, I'm the only child. I had to caregive for her. So I it was a tricky situation, but I was only able to do that because number one, I'd forgiven her and gone through a lot of counseling, sure. but I set my boundaries years ago. So you have the right to say, you know what? Thanksgiving's coming up and I don't like hosting it. I never have. I'm not going to be able to this year. Someone else is going to have to do it. That's all a part of decreasing stress and eliminating things and then delegate everything else you can. When you AED your life and bring it back to life and build a world that you don't have to escape from, you are able to manage the hormonal changes that happen in your body much easier. But as women, we tend to believe that we have to do everything. Men don't do that. No, they're very single-minded. You bet they are. And that's a blessing in some ways, right? It's aggravating to women who get angry, right? Because, you know, whatever, anything, you know, but men are real simple. They want good food, good sex, and they want to protect you. I mean, they're just so simple, it's those true. guys, right? It's true. It's true. And, and we fuss and fight over everything. So, you know, give it up, give it up and realize that your body is changing. Working harder is not the, is not the, is not your friend during this season. It's we need true. to rest, right? I, yeah. And it's hard to do. You say, Danny, I've got three kids, six kids, eight kids. I don't know. I homeschool them all. Well, guess what? Do you enjoy homeschooling? <laughs> so I talk to patients about this every day and I cannot sure. tell you. I had one patient this week. She has five kids. Wow. It was driving her crazy. And, and I said, man, you look better than I've seen you in years. She said, well, guess what? And I said, what? She said, I finally listened to you. All five kids are st- in January are starting school. I'm not homeschooling anymore. Amazing. You know, it's, it, it's so powerful what you shared because I teach that in two places. One, I have a group program. And so behind those doors, I do sit down with women. And I'm like, listen, there is a way to actually delegate 90% of your life. You think you have to do everything, but I have team. And I have systems. I don't go to grocery stores. I hate shopping for food. I don't manage cleaning my home. There's like a million things I don't do. And the closer I get to that alignment, literally I do what I want to do. I talk to amazing humans. I meet incredible practitioners and I get to create a product that changes the world. And then I get to love my children when they get home to me. And that's it. And I get to feed them with love. So I think we have such power as women to design our life. I think of it as life design. And you can actually completely shift every element of your life. I gave up room mom after pre-K. I was like, this is thankless. I am not into this. Crafting, I'm like, it's called Etsy. They make the things beautiful. So we can really put a lot of those stresses and plates down that we think we must carry And then all of a sudden you're a million times lighter and joyful. And then you have the space for this career or thing that you want. You bet. So then you have created a life that you do not have to escape from. And that is huge. As women, 
Now, many times as women, you know, it depends. In traditional marriages, te- technically, they say the husband is the head of the household, right? And and so I'm single, been divorced 20 years, so I am the head. But let's just say, let's just say we're in a traditional, you know, Bible belt where I come from. We're not the head of the household, but we set the tone for the entire home, right? right? The moment you walk through that ha- that door, sis, you set the tone for that entire family. And if you are stressed and overwhelmed um, and and angry and irritable, the entire family picks up on it. And it is just a cluster of (laughs) disaster starting from there. And we should be able to walk into a home full of peace. And because if there's no peace, there's nothing in your house. And so again, when we delegate, automate, eliminate, and delegate, it just makes your life so much easier. And this transitional time of hormones where we are up and down and all, it makes it so much easier. And the, and again, as we said earlier, the, the women who get through this the easiest, yeah. and I was very, I was in good shape when I started going through perimenopause and menopause, but it's still difficult. You're going to have hot flashes. You're right. You're going to have mood swings. But the ones who get through it the best are the ones who have the least inflammation in their body. The ones who are eating a clean, one ingredient, God made diet. The majority of the time, no one's perfect. There was only one perfect human, and it's not Danny Williamson. I can tell you that. Or it's not Shivani, right? It's just not. And yeah. so, but as a rule, you've got to eat a clean. I'm a fan of a Mediterranean diet. Somebody may be a fan of something else, but I just think it's the best diet out there. Me too. And so your diet will heal you or kill you, right? You have to sleep well. Your body heals when you sleep. The women who start going through menopause, you know, the, the ones who don't sleep are yeah. the ones who have the hardest job and I are I've seen. a hard time through going through menopause. And and the bed is for sleep and sex only, isn't it? It's yep. for sleep and sex only. If you're doing one or the, something else out in that bed, get out of it. Totally. You know, and your product has changed my life for sleep, by the way. That really? Sleep formula. Yeah, I got it right here. Deep sleep yeah. formula. Girl, my oh, well, my st- supplement store manager told me yesterday, she said, I have not slept like this. I just gave it to her last week to test. She told us yesterday, I- I've slept all night for the first time. And I said, well, you need an aura ring because you're going to see your REM sleep has gotten into way deeper. So all that being said, that's great. And I know this isn't an advertise, but this this product here, look at it. I've got it. I've spilt it everywhere. It's filthy. Um, <laughs> I've been taking it every night just to get epic sleep because I got horrible sleep one night. And then I was so mean. Like I was so irritable the whole day after. And one I was like, night of sleep can mess you up for, for, for a week. I mean, yeah. one night of bad sleep, I mean, of bad sleep. So you've got to sleep well. You have to get the electronics out of your room. You've got to get the TV out of your room and you don't need to be, you know, your phone doesn't need to be beside you. And you, you, if your partner's beside you there, if he snores, well, that's a whole nother problem. And there's nothing wrong with going to the other bedroom and sleeping because guaranteed he'll go get a sleep study and yep. get a CPAP, which is not sexy, but it's better than dying of sleep apnea, which, which is a whole nother thing that creates inflammation, right? And yep. cardiovascular disease. So you've got to sleep well, I've got a whole chapter on it. We don't have time to go into it. You've yeah. got to move well. Your body is designed for exercise. It is designed to move. And and you're going to have a harder time getting through menopause if you're not moving your body. doesn't have to be CrossFit. In fact, that's not my favorite, especially for perimenopausal, menopausal women, right? What is the ideal workout is my question. Because as I'm... As I'm going through, I'm thinking that maybe my crazy cardio hit workouts literally make me scrape the bottom of the gas tank. Like I can tell I've got nothing left like in my brain, in my body. I'm functioning from empty when I do those workouts. You bet. You've depleted all of your adrenal reserves when you do that. Now, some people it's fine and they don't they don't deplete their adrenal reserves. But when you're starting at less than a half a tank anyway, and you do that hardcore hit or that hardcore cardio, you if you feel worse after you exercise, then hello, that's the wrong exercise. You've got to listen to your body. I don't care if all your friend group is in, you know, hit class or they're in CrossFit. If it's not right for you, then don't do it. I'm a fan of yoga. It's been around for 2,000 years for a reason. It works, right? And so yoga can be an amazing cardiovascular exercise or or, or routine. 
or it could be restorative. That's the beauty of okay. yoga. I'm a huge fan of Pilates or walking, or maybe you just don't do anything for a season much other than walking and meditation. I can't meditate, Danny. My main Brian is a monkey. Well, just <laughs> sit there for a minute, you know, just sit there. Well, I fall asleep every time. That's fine. You need to sleep then clearly. Your body <laughs> needs to rest, but you have to find what's best for you. I don't think there's any specific one. Exercise creates inflammation in your body and that's good, right? Yeah. When your body is ready for that, but not everyone needs that hardcore. I was in New York City this weekend. It's the New York City Marathon. Well, I can tell you right now, Danny Williamson has run two half marathons. I don't want any part of it ever again. It's not for me. Yeah. It's not for me. I did run 5K and I was like, never again. I'm not a 5K runner, much less any of the rest. But my question to you then is, a lot of us are somewhat addicted to our workouts. I'm one of them. I need my workout for my happiness. Like even today, I have four podcast interviews. I'm the guest of three and I get to interview on this one. And I had to do my cardio, but I didn't like, I just did um, what I consider 20 minutes uphill. That's moderate and good. But a lot of us feel like we're not going to maintain our weight or like physical body health if we don't push. So. Well, I just hate to tell them, but they're wrong. (laughs) <laughs> so we don't have to push it. Don't push it. You're going to create systemic inflammation. You're going to you're going to hit every wall known to man. And if you don't enjoy it, if it doesn't bring you joy, you're not going to do it. Figure. I don't care if it's hula hooping, yeah. rollerblading, ballroom dancing, which is number one for dementia to prevent d- dementia and Alzheimer's. Ballroom dancing. I don't care what it is. Find what it is that gives you joy and do it and get a buddy. Call, call your buddy, yeah. two of us right there together, call your buddy. You're not going to leave your buddy waiting at the gym or on the, on the street. That's the best advice I have. Find somebody to work out with, and then you're going to do it. Plus, then you're building community. Correct. Correct. So it's all the all the things at one time. But you do have to move because, you know, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of men and women period. Still to this day, other things have gone down, but cardiovascular disease will kill you. And who dies from cardiovascular disease? The majority of the people, not everyone, are the postmenopausal women hmm. with no hormones. Wow. So think about this. You're, when your hormones start to leave and you are not hormonally balanced and someone isn't you know, prescribing bioidentical hormones for you at physiological levels that they would be normally, you are increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease, sudden cardiac death. That's the first and last sign of heart disease for 50% of the people, sudden cardiac death. Because people say, well, I can't use bioidentical hormones and this is not a hormone talk, but if hormones who 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 dies? Who gets breast cancer? Who dies of heart disease? The women with no hormones, not the women with hormones. Wow. The majority. So bioidentical hormones are not the root of all evil. Always know this. If sure. they were, then the 20-year-olds, the 25-year-old women, the women who are pregnant would all have breast cancer because that's when your hormones are through the roof. Sure. My 26 year old daughter's hormones, her skin is up to here. She's not sagging. Her boobs are up to here, right? Everything is working, right? Her bones are strong as that desk right there. Those are not the women who get breast cancer as a rule, as a rule. Some women do, right? Or die of a heart attack. Some women do in their 20s and 30s. It's the women who lose their hormones who are not optimally maintained. So I'm a big fan and hormones are anti-inflammatory. Right. Right. And that maintenance is so important. And I'm so glad you're speaking into that because so many people don't understand that they have options. So many people just are transitioning, transitioning and suffering. I'm like, guys, find the right practitioner who will guide you on how to do this better. Because so many of us are estrogen dominant, low progesterone. I have postmenopausal progesterone. I'm like, okay. So it, there's all these fluctuations. If you don't know about them, how can you address them? And then if you're symptomatic and don't even realize it, it you have options to live so much more vibrantly and with so much like to thrive at such a level, it doesn't have to be this downhill experience. Absolutely not. And so you have so many OBGYNs who tell women, oh, no, no, you don't need any hormones. What? 
What do you mean you don't need hormones? Just because you're angry and shriveled up and dried up does not mean, and you weren't taught. I went to a phenomenal school. I was told women do not need hormones past menopause. Well, let me tell you something. When women were created, right? Millions of years ago, thousands of years ago, whatever you want to believe, sure. most women did not live past menopause. Correct. We were not living without our hormones. Then shit, many of them didn't even live through childbirth. Right. right? So there is so so don't tell me women don't need hormones. Women keep hormones, estrogen. Low estrogen and Alzheimer's are directly relinked. So is est- uh, inflammation and Alzheimer's. I mean, there are lots of things that connect to Alzheimer's and sugar intake. Sure. But no estrogen, oh, increased risk of Alzheimer's. No estrogen. Clearly, you're going to have osteoporosis. Your skin is going to sag. Estrogen and heart disease are directly linked. Wow. You know, low estrogen and heart. So we need to keep our hormones optimal. And I'm so glad you said this. Find a healthcare provider. Yeah. who will work with you and helps you walk this journey. If you have a provider who says, no, you don't need that. It's, I, I'm sorry you have a vagina that bleeds every time you have sex. What? Well, then what are you going to do about it? Because we have many options right. that will help you through that. No one has to suffer through menopause or through sex. Of course, women don't want sex when they go through menopause. Everything dries up. Estrogen keeps the vagina lubricated. It keeps everything going in your body. It's the oldest hormone we have. Wow. So again, there are some women who've had ca- who cannot use hormones. So this is, I'm talking for the majority of the public, not the, the cases that d- cannot use hormones. They've had cancer, they've had a breast cancer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they can't, and for whatever reason, they can't have hormones. But hormones give you life they do and yeah. they keep you they keep you vibrant and they decrease inflammation in your body inflammation hormones go hand in hand no hormones inflammation inflammation decreases hormones i mean it's a vicious cycle right and so find a healthcare provider who works for you i work for you i'm not your yes woman over there but i work for you and i want to help you live the best life that you can live because you know, no matter what you believe, maybe we have one life, maybe we have 40 lives. I don't know. But right now, what I know is we're here right now. And I want this life and your life to be the best it can be and to be joyful because we don't have enough joy. It's true. So many people are in a state of chronic stress, chronic terrible. Suffering. Not understanding that their body is holding them behind. Like I, I, I'm always like, guys, when you feel incredible in your body, then all of a sudden, mental, emotional health. That's that's the alignment Ayurveda teaches us. But if if physical body is always inflamed, always holding you behind, then that mental health is never where it could be. Emotional health is never where it could be. So, do you have any last tips? Because I know we could talk for hours, you and I. We could. Do you have any last tips for women who are going through perimenopause, menopause? I know sleep is a big one. Inflammation we talked about is a big one. Stress is a really big one. Um, Any others that you see women doing or or not realizing are important points? I want every single woman out there, whether you're going through menopause or not, to know that you are not broken. You are not broken. You were born most likely healthy and whole. Maybe not. There's some babies, clearly they're born sick, but you are not broken. And you you can reverse anything that you've turned on. Right. It is not easy, but it is worth it. And I, 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 that's what I want women to know is you're, you're not broken. We have, a, I want you to live the life that you were designed to live. And it doesn't take much to reverse whatever's going on. Your body wants to be 100%. It wants to right ship and get back on path. And it doesn't take long. And once you start feeling better, there's nothing that's going to stop you. I mean, you are going to then be living the life you were designed to live. And, you know, you're not broken. Menopause is an honor. It's a privilege. Embrace it. Look at your mom. See how she did. Also know that, you know, a piece of it is genetics, but not everything because you don't have to be your genetics. And if she didn't have a good situation going through menopause, then that's all right. You're you're eating better, sleeping better, moving better, pooping better, de-stressing better and all of that than your mom did, hopefully. And so you're going to get through this. It's a season. Every season changes. And when you get to the other side, it is miraculous. 
I absolutely love this season. My 50s are phenomenal. I can't, I mean, I've got two more years left in my 50s. And so it's a privilege to live this long. And I can't wait to see what the 60s bring. You get to be the kooky, crazy woman, you know, <laughs> the wild postmenopausal woman who can say and do anything. Yep. Unapologetic. Unapologetic. Find a provider who helps you walk this journey, who believes and hormonal optimization, because that's what it's about. Absolutely. I recently went to an office and I was kind of shocked. I hadn't been to a traditional office in so long and I had been referred there and I was like, wow, y'all think differently. I won't be back. I need to go back to my functional team who understands my mindset around the options I have. I have unlimited options for how I choose to manage my health and my hormones and my bioidentical hormones and how I want to optimize. I think we can leverage going into each day decade and have more joy and more health and more vibrant. You bet. Each decade that we are honored and privileged to be on this earth, I mean, it's a miracle. And, as, and especially with COVID and everything that we saw, right? I mean, I'm more, it's it's more of a miracle now, right? To be, to get into each decade and I'm getting ready to finish not long, not the fifties. And so get into, you know, my sixth decade. I it, it, just embrace it and realize that, Stress will kill you. Automate, eliminate, and delegate. You have the right to say no. You have the right to put the brakes on all of this and get rid of the soul suckers. And I am telling you that includes jobs, spouses. I'm not about divorce, but I mean, if you're in an, in an abusive marriage, then figure out a way. to I get. Love. I mean, I did. I got out of an abusive marriage I, and I'll get back in a, a marriage eventually someday, but you have the right to live your best life. And uh, I mean, that's basically it. If you were born healthy, you do not have to live sick and you are in charge of your health. Slow it down, sis, slow it down. Figure out what it takes to automate, eliminate and delegate and start reversing and living the life you were designed. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that message today. I, I, I'm receiving it. AED your life. AED. I'm telling you, it will bring you back to life. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Danny, for joining me today. This has been incredible. Will you share where people can find you and your book? Absolutely. Absolutely. Danny Williamson Wellness um, is my website. So everything's there. Danny Will- Dan- no, that is a lie. DannyWilliamson.com is my website. Good boy. Danny Williamson Wellness is Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. So, but DannyWilliamson.com has everything. We've got a fantastic website, great Instagram. Yeah. And the book is everywhere. Everywhere you want to buy books, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. I love it if you go to your local health or local health food. Well, I love you go there as well, health food store, but your bookstore and ask for it because I'm all about supporting local, shopping local, yes. supporting women-owned businesses, right? Sure. Like ours. Yes. For sure. And then you have your online emporium for supplements, right? You bet I do. You bet. So at dannywilliamson.com or Instagram, I've got a link tree there and boom, you can just click every link. We have an online store. We ship all over the United States, your products now. Uh, yes. Everywhere. All 50 states we ship. So we've got a phenomenal online store and a brick and mortar. If you're ever in Franklin, Tennessee, come see us because the brick and mortar supplement store is open six days a week. We have over 500 supplements in there. Amazing. And then one last question, just because I love asking this question. How do you feel about my turmeric? Oh my gosh. Oh, it's phenomenal. And it does not give any of my patients heartburn, which is really great. Yes. Cause I've got another one that does. And so we'll be transitioning out. No, it's, it's fantastic. Of course, I'm a huge fan of turmeric and, but then when I researched and found about yours, that anti-inflammatory, the way you have formulated it is better than, than anything I've seen so far. So, so far, so good. Thanks. Yes. But I am telling you this, this, I know that turmeric is your, is your, is your thing, but this deep sleep formula, never seen anything like it. I know. And I love that you can take it in the middle of the night. If you can't go back to sleep to me, I'm always like, thank God I have a solution or I will kill someone tomorrow if I don't get my sleep. 
that is the huge selling point is you can take it in the middle of the night. People don't realize that. So you can just redose it in your sleep, shake it, take it. You don't even, I mean, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Now the sleep tea, I haven't tried yet, but we've sold out. We only have one left. And so I, I, it must be working. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, you're, you're a rock star, sis, and you're a woman-owned business, and you're doing it. You're changing the world. And if you don't heal the inflammation in your body, you will never heal anything from the anxiety to the depression to the migraine headaches to the joint pain to the autoimmune disease. Inflammation is the root of 100% of all chronic lifestyle disease. True, true. And we'll end it on that, guys. Reduce that chronic, systemic, lifestyle-created inflammation. Do the work. Do the six steps that Danny teaches us. Her book is incredible. It's called Wild and Well. I was reading it like, yes, yes, sis, let's go. Let's teach them. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate you today. And thank you. of course, we will keep be in up. touch. Yeah, yes, keep it up. Thank you. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Check out our sponsor, Fusionary Formulas, the potent turmeric supplement used by doctors around the U.S. for patients with pain and inflammation. www.fusionaryformulas.com. I'm your host, Dr. Shivani Gupta. For more, visit shivanigupta.com. Subscribe to this podcast in Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Click the follow button or subscribe in any of the apps that you use. That's all I've got for you on the Fusionary Health Podcast this week. You have the power to transform your health and achieve vibrant health starting today.